Today I'm running a 3 by 1600 track workout and I'd like to share why I think you should consider adding it to your training plan. When you start training, it's best to have a strategic training plan and practice mile repeats at specific times leading up to race day. If you're training for a 5k or 10k, start practicing mile repeats at an easy pace at at least three to six weeks from your race day. Make sure to not do them so close to race day because like any important race, you're gonna to wanna to taper before that race day, probably three to 14 days prior, depending on how important that race is. Mile repeats offer three great benefits. For one, they can improve your speed. To effectively increase your speed, you need to increase your VO2 max, which is the amount of oxygen your body uses to produce energy. If you wanna see a VO2 max test, I have a video that you can see, just click above or a link in the description. So with mile repeats, it can be challenging for new runners who are unfamiliar with the speed workouts that are done on the track in general. But what's great about mile repeats is that they will break the run up into more manageable segments. So you can still get that speed training exercise that's generally harder to do. But since it's broken up in chunks, it's a little more manageable. And this allows you to reach your target VO2 maxes and increase your pace more easily. The second benefit of mile repeats is it helps you develop mental toughness. Mile repeats are an excellent workout for improving your ability to deal with mental discomfort, a key component to successfully running long distances. And then the third benefit for mile repeats is to improve your running economy. Running economy refers to the efficient use of physiological elements to improve your pace or distance. Mile repeats increase your red blood cell count and your VO2 max, both which help you run more efficiently. How to run mile repeats. You're going to want to find a track. It doesn't have to be on a track. You could theoretically do this anywhere if, it was, if you mark the mile off on the ground somewhere. Or you could do this on a treadmill. But I like to do it outside on the track. And then you're going to want to do a warm-up. And then after you do your warm-up, you're going to run your first rep, which is going to be one mile. You're going to take some type of break. It's going to be an active or passive recovery. We'll go over that a little bit later. And then you run your second rep. If you do at least two of these, you've ran your mile repeats. Ideally, you would like to build up to at least three. Some half marathoners and marathoners could build up to eight. Uh, but for myself, who runs the 5K, I will typically just stop at three in my, uh, in my training sessions. So talked about uh, what type of recovery you're going to want to do within the intervals. Uh, you have a choice between active or passive recovery. And this basically means whether or not you're going to jog as your recovery or if you're going to just stand uh, for your recovery. A paper titled Active Versus Passive Recovery During an Aerobic Interval Training Session in Well-Trained Runners goes over some of the pros and cons to a passive versus active recovery. And I'll post a link to that too. So in general, most coaches are going to say that if you want to improve your VO2 max, then you need to spend time at 90% VO2 max or greater. In the study, the athletes who did active or passive recovery both had equal amounts of time spent at that 90% VO2 max effort. However, the athletes who did passive recovery were able to hit near 100 or their actual VO2 max, as opposed to the active recovery people who basically hovered right around the 90%. This is to say that the difference between the two recoveries is whether or not you were satisfied at being just at 90% or if you actually wanted to spend more time at near 100%. The study also discovered another benefit of passive recovery. Athletes who performed passive recovery had a perception of lower exertion within their exercise session. This may seem like common sense since one may imagine that running for a single session straight would be a lot more difficult than one who ran with many different breaks, uh, breaking up their entire workout session. On a positive side for active recovery was that those athletes had lower measures of lactate levels. The researchers hypothesized the reason for this being that the athlete who spent more time in active recovery was able to actually cycle out all those metabolites uh, through the active recovery. Another factor to consider that the paper doesn't mention is the admin and logistics of having an active recovery. For example, if you're trying to track the workout progression of a particular workout over time, you're going to want to keep as many variables the same. For example, the running distance, the amount of intervals you conduct, the rest time, or in the case of the active recovery, the jogging distance itself. If you conduct one workout with, let's say, a 200 meter active recovery jog, how are you gonna keep track of how fast you're going for that 200 meters? 
How are you going to keep track of that 200 meters a month later? To some athletes, this may not matter, but to many, it probably does. Other problems that can arise from this are the starting points on the track. For example, if I conduct a two minute active recovery, where on the track am I going to be when I start my next interval? It might not be at a clearly uh, marked area of the track. It's just more considerations that you should make if you're going to add an active recovery. And so let's go to uh, the video of what I'm doing here today. Today I'm doing a three by 1600 or three one mile repeats. I'm going to use a three minute passive recovery in between all my sets. And I start off with a warm up. For the warm up, I did an 800 meter jog, followed by some dynamic exercises, followed by some uh, four to 600 meter striders. The goal today was to run seven minutes, 31 seconds for each of my mile repeats. And if you're wondering how I created that, I, uh, I get all my times based off of the famous running coach, Jack Daniels. He created a running calculator. You just put in uh, the times that you ran your most recent race event for whatever distance you ran, and the calculator spits out uh, how you should run your, your uh, various intervals for different distances and what speeds for each one of those distances. And uh, today the calculator spit out 731 for my one mile intervals. So I'll uh, go ahead and fast forward this and I'll start letting you hear uh, how my workout went. 7.31, right on time. Ah. On the first lap, I was three seconds too fast. Well, I should say on the first set, on the first lap, I was three seconds too fast. Second lap, I maintained my three seconds too fast, so I got right back on pace. And then when I finished at the very end, I was nine seconds ahead. So I ended up running uh, three seconds too fast the final two laps for a total of nine seconds too fast overall in that first mile. But on, uh, on this mile, I was five seconds too fast in the first lap and then on the second lap, my total time was four seconds too fast, which means um, I slew down quite a bit because I was only four seconds ahead of schedule. And then for the final two laps, it looks like I uh, was able to probably cut two seconds per lap to get right on the, the 731 pace. So overall, I'm nine seconds ahead because of that first mile. But uh Hopefully I can maintain pace for the for the third mile. Oh, 7.21. Alright, 10 seconds too fast, 10 seconds too fast, 7.21. So, the first lap was actually my best first lap. I was only two seconds fast on that one. So, I thought I slew it down, but when I came in for the second lap, I was actually seven seconds ahead, which meant I was five seconds too fast for that second lap. And then it looks like for the final two laps here, I gained another three seconds for a total of 10 seconds too fast. So I probably was getting really close to the speed I was supposed to be running because if you average out the last two, I was only 1.5 seconds too fast per lap. So in total, First lap was nine seconds too fast. Second one was right on the money at 7.31. And then the third one was 10 seconds too fast. So one a little hard. Um, probably have to just do an easy day or two of recovery to make up for it. So now it's time to, uh, to uh, down, down regulate my body. I wanna do a cool down opposite 
uh, opposite, uh, or I should say clockwise track running. And uh, I'll do a barefoot just to uh, work on all those muscles and joints and ligaments with inside the bone. All the intervals plus the walking plus the cool down 3.7 miles plus the 1.5 so uh, what's that like five a little over five miles of total training uh, so yeah that's that that's how you do a 3 by 1600